Hello, this is John Spielman with a summary of today's round. Today being Friday, April the 23rd, uh, which is, um, is it Tony Mars's birthday? Is it St George's Day? I'm not sure. Um, anyway, it's 23rd of April. And um, here we are. I'm just going to check that, uh, that the broadcast has started, which it has. The recording has started. I'm doing a slightly different setup from what I do when I'm streaming because I don't have um, any chat, of course. And here we are. The round's finished. And there have been two decisive games. But we'll just work down, work down the round. So the first one was Nipomnishi Caruana. Nipomnishi started the round a point ahead of Caruana and Geary, <coughs> and he decided to play a really safe opening. Played the Scotch Four Knights, which is basically a drawing variation at this level. <coughs> you can play Knight E4. Um, if you want to, um, there's some game, is it Yu Yang Yi, I think, beat some guy, um, but, beat Mamadiarov, in fact, when I say some guy, but, I mean, of course, Caruana knew precisely what he was doing, and in fact, Nupo just did this, which is tantamount to a draw offer, I would say. Almost. So... White's won a pawn, but he's got really bad pawn structure. And all black has to make sure is that he doesn't allow white to get something like rook b7, pawn a7, because that would be a disaster. So he plays a bat rank move. Now white's problem is that if, say, rook b1... Um, rook a7, he in fact played rook b1. King 8, king up. Now you can't go rook b7, which threatens a7, because of rook takes a6. With a bat rank trick that gives black the advantage. Quite a serious advantage, actually. So he went rook b6, protecting his pawn. And then they played some moves. And basically, this position is equal. He took the pawn after a while. You mustn't go... Um, we just go here, and that's the end of that. Now, rook, you're going to take on um, a6. He went rook b7, takes, takes rook b2, and they're going to draw a couple of moves later. So, a very quiet draw. Nipponishi keeping his lead. Um, now, there were three other games. Alexienko against Wang Hao is still going when I started writing this, but it's finished um, with some perpetual check. Um, the opening was interesting. Wang Hao played g5, which is very macho, but in d5. And for a little while, well, he gets the bishop as well. I thought e4 might be a move, but I'd missed um, knight e5, bishop b6, queen a4 check. Well, I hadn't thought about it, really. Because if you had to play d4 or pawn takes pawn, this might be a reasonable position. Not a queen a4 check, it's not, of course. He went queen b3, which people thought was odd at the time. Well, I thought was odd. But queen to here, bishop to here, knight here. This is what I was trying to do takes rook d8 g5 queen d3 and it's rather important that after queen f2 you have this annoying move check this trick after which black is absolutely fine i didn't notice that during the game i should have done i suppose but um this if you had time to play rook f1 i mean if you played rook d7 say Cast rook to here, castles bishop f6, and this is certainly dangerous. Very dangerous position, but queen d1 check diffuses it. 
So what happened was, in fact, when Queen B3, quite what he's done. He stopped a guy casting long, I suppose. No, I wasn't sure this was correct. There were quite a lot of tactics going on around about here. Had to be careful. For instance, rook to here, rook to there. Queen takes pawn, loses to bishop c1. And if bishop a6, then I think you can go maybe c4. Queen takes pawn. Queen a4 and knight f5 or something. May, maybe this isn't... Oh, you can go knight d5 maybe as well. I don't know. It, it's a little bit... A bit dangerous. I wasn't sure. Um, this one I'm going to ask the engine see if it talks to me. It is talking to me and it's saying knight f5, queen d3 and queen c1. And basically the tactics now work out. Obviously it's telling me the tactics work out for white. Which is not that extraordinary. You can see that really bad things happen. In queen e4 I want to play. D1. Queen. And basically you're going to play bishop h6 in a minute or something. And splat the guy totally. Um, so this didn't happen in fact. He... Got the right rule. I thought he was going to go bishop b4 to 4c5, but he did manage that anyway. Now Wang Hao got an f5, and now now he's attacking the knight and he's all right. He's actually slightly better. It's a good move, I think. Controlling some white squares, but okay, the position is still playable, and I was still playing this when I started writing, as I said, but they did some. Wang Hao tried a bit longer. And they agreed to draw. And obviously, you know, we could analyse it a bit, but we don't need to. We know it's all true. We believe these boys. That was that one. Um, then I'm going to carry on. Grishchuk against Vesha Lagrav was very interesting. The most important game from the from the point of view who's going to win the tournament was uh, Geary against Ding Liren. Um, I've got them both here. I've got some small amounts of notes. Um, this is one of these exchange Lopez's. It's actually a dulled, we call it, a delayed exchange where Lopez deferred. Um, all these things. That's an annoying move, isn't it? But he castles. Actually, he was fine for a long time here. Apparently, I thought he'd go knight. I thought he might have gone knight c4 and a4, but this is a good idea. And actually, the engine wants to go c4 in this position, I believe, and thinks it's quite okay for black. Uh, where am I? I? Move somewhere about. It's one thing about this interface, it's not so great. Uh, c4, d takes c4, f5. That's right, c4, d takes c4, f5, bishop c5, queen e8, and it's reasonably happy for black. I think it wants to play the disgusting move bishop a7 now, which shows it's not that happy. Okay, uh, ding, with ding did it this way around. g5, ding just didn't quite get it right. F, f4 isn't ridiculous. The engine actually wants to play g4 in this position, which... Is a move in three quarters, perhaps okay. Um, and now g4 is a mistake. I think you should recapture an f5 with the queen. That's very good. I was thinking about playing knight h2, I think, here as well. I don't know how that is. Uh, how's that? It says g takes h3, g4, rook h, bishop g4, and okay. Black's certainly very active here. But he... But he now he played an excellent move, knight e4. I don't know if it's not the engine's first choice, but it gives him a big initiative and means that this bishop isn't playing. And Ding decided to take it. He perhaps shouldn't have done. And now it's really, really hard to play for Black in practice with his king wandering around and this bishop not doing very much. 
it's almost like an opposite bishop, you know, which doesn't just doesn't do very much. In if they had opposite bishops, d4 is a good move. C5 takes here, here, and he resigned. Rook c6, d5, and you're being splatted. I mean, you can play queen f4, but you've got fewer pieces. Rook c7, presumably queen a6 check, and some horror occurs. I haven't even really thought about it very much, but it's clear that horror will occur. Um, well, there might even be some sort of epauletti mate, mightn't there? Rook here, here, here. Check here. Check there. It's not quite an epauletti mate. It's actually a very strange smothered mate. Anyway, so none of that occurred, of course, and Ding resigned and is completely out of it. Poor chap. Had a terrible tournament. <coughs> right throughout. Grease Chuck against MVL was also a very interesting game. It's the game where I watched most during the round when I was streaming and we'll play some moves. I mean, Grieschuk decided to play this one. Very complicated position. I don't, I mean, I don't know round about here what the best moves are at all. He played a4, which I don't know is that right? I, otherwise I assume a4 is a threat because 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 the e4 pawn is and they got to this position. I thought he might go g3, but not g4 is a reasonable answer. Um, I thought he might play knight, knight g4 here. But h5, knight f2. There's some interesting lines. There's knight g4, I have knight f2, rook to there. It's rook, queen takes knight. Um, bishop g7. F5. And then queen b3 can be played and it gets very complicated. Uh, h6 you play a root to here apparently to prepare that square and god knows. I um, think it quite likes. Did it want to play... Um, it didn't want to go hg7. It wants to go g4, bishop g6, hg7. Who knows? really complicated it didn't have to play f5 and knight d5 but obviously wanted to um and could have maybe played h6 before doing that i suppose that gives the bishop the g6 square too early maybe um so that was a line he played this in fact h5 good move forcing the h5 open this chip played very simply Thought rook c6 might have been a better move, keeping a bit more control of the position. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's really difficult. Really hard to tell. Um, he took, in fact. This doesn't look great. Knight f4, I think they're just going takes, 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 because the rook protects c3 and you're going to double on the h line. Uh, knight g4 is definitely better here. Round about here, it's really good for white. Um, or maybe has he slightly got it wrong at this point? Um, oh, I think it wanted to do... If I need to give the bishop a square. Apparently, Ponte's pawn on Passau is really strong, which is very hard to see. I mean, the engine gives this line, take, queen takes, rook h3, which is not at all obvious move to me, queen h5, queen g2, knight c2, knight e4, bishop b7, bishop c3, knight d4, rook f1. And basically black is not getting any real play. And white somehow shored all his pieces together and got a huge attack, I think. I'm not sure. What are you doing after queen d7? Is there something absolutely vile? Let's ask its sublime majesty. d6 is being played. And of course, it's a problem with that square. And yeah, that's the end of the world, isn't it? Okay, we believe it. We believe it. Um, so that was very difficult to to assess. 
and now basically he tries to sacrifice an h5. Queen d6 was an excellent move. King a2. If um, rook h5, he can't go rook h5 at the moment because of. Well, there's going to be a rook d1 check, isn't there? Takes takes queen takes rook d1, just wins for, for black. In fact, he gets to the same position. This position. Have I missed something out? Oh, it was queen h2, wasn't it? No, we're not there yet. Rook d4, excellent move. The only move, actually. Now, if queen here takes, takes, check here check bishop queen checks gives perpetual check king a2 queen e6 king b1 queen b6 ah uh, so that would have been a draw and grishchuk tried this play tried this move check can't take because a queen d5 check and now it would have been sensible for MVL to play rook h4 here. Rook h4, rook h4, queen check, takes, takes, here, here. And you're supposedly okay in this position. You can try rook c4 maybe. I guess he plays either king h7 or... It, I mean, it, does, it isn't that obvious this is okay actually. But I suppose once the king gets to g6, you're going to be all right, really. Um, let's play some more moves. If this one, d6. Here, you don't care about. You play g2. Oh, I've just left C2 on please, sorry. Yeah, I mean, basically black is okay. Right, so he should have done that, perhaps. In fact, he did this one, which also looked okay. But now he played rook g5, which also looks okay, but it's perhaps a mistake. But he should play rook e8, followed by, by b6. Take this pawn later if you want to. After takes, white has this cunning move. Because now for it takes bishop, you have check, king h7, check, and you take this rook. Which is, which is what queens do, they fork things. Rook to there actually is a mistake. Now, strange line that goes here, check, here, here. This one, king to here. And black basically can't coordinate his boys is a bit surprising. You'd think there'd be some way to do this but I think there is a threat of maybe bishop h6 and you just don't have a way to do it. If rook c to f2 presumably bishop one of these bishop moves bishop h6 and white is clearly better. I mean black gets some checks but King doesn't isn't going to be noted when it's up in the middle of the board. That was very hard to see. What actually happened was he went this way. Well, engines start by saying that this is okay. This one's already got to the conclusion it's not. Table bases tell you it's lost. Basically, White's plan is to get his king on a6 and pawn on b5. And if he does that, then he wins. And it's a tempo either way, but it's not too difficult. He could have gone bishop to d8 to e7 as well. That would also have worked. You can go king b5 as well. You can go king b5. King here. King here. King here. King here somewhere. Bishop there, bishop there. Uh, 
And now you win easily because um, just get back somewhere. Um, this is worth right, isn't it? It's fine. Looking to here. Eventually you do that. So that, that would have been winning and in fact what they did he went b5 and MVL resigned because after I think he should have tried to add one more move king d7 but after d5 it's very clear it's going because you get him b6 easily it's just a very sad position actually um, I think it's king d5 I think bishop a5 or king d5 are the two winning moves king d5 is clearly what you play Bishop c7, Bishop d4, I don't know, Bishop h2, I, I'm just playing the engine moves at the moment. And now I'm going to play Bishop b5. And that's not going to be fun, is it? Because you're going to have to swap the bishops. And then White wins the pawn ending, obviously. So a very interesting round. Um, I hope I haven't descended into slight... Uh, I mean, I've been doing this now for six hours, really, so my brain has gone slightly moist. And um, the scores now, if we look, uh, sorry, that's something somebody was showing me earlier. And this is a pussycat somebody was showing me earlier uh, in my stream. And if we go to chess bomb, which is where I meant to be, then we can get the scores easily, which are as follows. Nipo has seven, Geary six and a half, um, and Caruana six. And it's between those three, I would say. And Grischuk and MVL on five and a half. And down it goes. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, um, I ought to know what the pairings are. Maybe it's going to tell me. Have they got watch broadcasts upcoming round 11 completed not upcoming yet so i'm not sure exactly what the uh, rounds are we're actually inside in a place that i can show you a uh, cross table quite easily so let's do that and the cross table shows that um, Nupo has got, he's played all the top three, hasn't he? So he's got, he's still got M, uh, MVL to play, has he? Yes, he's still got MVL to play, of course, Who and uh, Wang and Ding. So, so Ding could be a very tough opponent, actually, when he's a kingmaker. Geary has got Caruana, so that's, Unless one of them wins, that's another half point given to ne to Nepo and Grischuk and Alexienka. Um, oh, oh, I haven't got the scores updated because I haven't updated the um, Wang, the Wang Alexienka game in here. So they both got half a point more. And um, Caruana has got to play Geary again and Grischuk and Wang Hao. So I guess Nipomnishi is the favourite, now Geary is probably second favourite and Caruana third. Well I, I hope the tournament continues to be such fun and I'm now going to post this. I'm going to get it to you I hope as soon as possible. Just see it's on, it is on and let's stop it.